worship you you have done great things our God you've cleansed us you've made us whole only by your grace never by our cleverness only by your power only by your mercy and so this morning we adore you we glorify your name in worship and even in the speaking of your word, we glorify your name. Receive the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, let the church say amen. amen. Greet five people. If you don't do that, you are a suspect this morning. <laughs> Greet five people. Just go to them. If you haven't seen them for some time, tell them we missed you. And mean it from your heart. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We give God all the praise. Don't be a suspect if you haven't gone to anybody, you are a suspect. Father God, we worship you this morning. What a God you are. As we bring out this word for the next few minutes, Lord, we speak that your word will continue to be true. Let every man be a liar, but God be true. Lord, we pray that hearts of men and women will be converted today. Hearts of men and women. Lord, we are speaking in the name of Jesus for everyone that sits among us today. That Lord, today they will know that it's not a mistake that they came to the house of God. That those that are bleeding inside, God Almighty, you will be able to heal their wounds. Ladies and gentlemen, as our eyes are closed, there are so many hidden wounds. The things that are deep-seated that God is dealing with this morning. Things that you cannot share. Because even if you share, nobody will understand. But there is a God who understands. The God of Isaac, the God of Abraham. The God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The God of Daniel. He is the God who dives deep into your heart and begins to understand what you are going through. Amen. My Father, my Father, and my God, I pray that you may jump in into that heart that is bleeding, into that heart that is sorrowful, into that heart that you may jump in God and bring jubilation to the heart. Father, that the joy will not just be that hypocritical first joy, but that there will be joy that bubbles from the inside. We speak in the name of Jesus for healing that breaks every yoke. I speak that bondage be broken. I speak that sadness be broken and be destroyed. Those that feel they have been denied of good things of this world. I pray Jehovah that you may jump in. 
to their heart and begin to heal and to begin to mend their heart. In the sovereign name of Jesus, we rebuke the devourer. We speak against pain and disease. We speak against it and let the word of God, Father, confirm it. As we bring it, let the word confirm the healing. Let the word confirm the peace that comes upon us. For by his stripes we are healed. For by his stripes we are healed. For by his stripes we are healed. I declare healing in the name of Jesus. I decree healing by the power of the cross. Father, those hearts that are crushed by words of men, I pray a mending like never before. Begin to mend my father. Every piece that is flown away, begin to collect it, Lord. I, 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 I pray that even as you prophesied, as your servant prophesied in Ezekiel and 37, that born came back to its born. I pray that oh father peace will come back to where it belongs in the heart of your children. Father hear my prayer this morning. Hear my cry for your people this morning. Hear my cry for your people this morning. That father no one of us that are here will go out of this hall with that pain and that frustration but that we will go out rejoicing in the name of Jesus we will go out in peace in the name of Jesus if people came in pieces they will go out in peace in the name of Jesus we decree that God, even as we have sung the song over and over you have forgiven us oh God and made us holy and so heal us my father we decree that this prayer father will be oh God a prayer for the weak that people will walk in peace and talk in peace in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of the Lord let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say another amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let it be well with your soul. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The gospel according to St. Matthew and chapter number 9, chapter number 6, verse 19, chapter number 6, verse number 19. I want to speak to you this morning on something that I have entitled a materialistic generation. Matthew and chapter number 6 verse 19. And we're going to look at those verses of scripture here. The Bible says on the board do not lay up your treasures on earth where moth and rust do what? Destroy. And where who? Thieves break and steal. Let's read it together a bit louder than that. Let's read it. One, two, three, go. Do not, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Let's go to verse number 20. Let's go. One, two, three. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. What manner of home is that? Especially when you live in South Africa, isn't that the place that you should long for? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Especially when you live in a land where you are not sure. You have to live under lock and key every minute of your life. Amen. And then they are introducing to us an area where there is no breaking in. Did you hear what I said? Where there is no rust. Where there is, where there is no evil. He says, guys, ladies and gentlemen, 
Don't lay your treasure. In other words, don't put your total dependency, your total trust on the earth where things can scatter anytime. You and me listen to the news and we hear, uh, uh, we read newspapers and we know that anytime it's tea time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's this has happened there. This has happened there. This has, you know, sometimes it feels like, okay, it has happened, it's far. But when it hits your home, you know that you are in the earth. Amen. Amen. You know that, hey, La Pem Shaveni, you cannot, you cannot depend on it completely. You need something stronger, something more powerful. And I'm speaking to the church of Jesus Christ this morning because unfortunately, the church of Jesus Christ has, has gone so materialistic that they are forgetting that we are living in a temporal home. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We have forgotten that, wow. This is a temporal home. You know, in the past, we would sing songs like, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. But unfortunately, most of us are putting all our efforts in achieving things for this earth. And I'm coming. Maybe some of you are saying, no, pastor, you want us to be poor. We are coming. Just give me time. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we, we're going to cover you just now. Because, because people are all over the shore and, and trying to acquire this and trying to acquire that. But there is one thing that is missing. We are living in a very, very, very materialistic society. Many people in our generation have removed God completely from the equation. Hello? We have removed God completely. Can, can you imagine, you know, what, what is, tell me, tell me, what is the most powerful nation on the earth as we know it? Hello, talk. We are all talking about America here, isn't it? We say it's the most powerful. You know, that's why even when they are having elections there, people's hearts are beating here. But the elections are there. We have nothing to do with it, but people's hearts are beating here. People are fainting here. They hear that, hey, the guy who has won, is not, he doesn't love people. They faint, but they have nothing to do with America. That means America is powerful. But have you ever asked yourself, how did it become powerful? At one time, remember, America was not that powerful. There was a nation called Great Britain. They were the most powerful on the face of the earth. Have you ever wondered why nations become so powerful? One of the things that we saw over the number of years that have gone by. And some of you have been born in it. Is that America changed its style. Because when they were starting off. I thought I, thought I was going to bring an, an, a, a, a US dollar. So that you see what they wrote on it many years ago. Who knows what they wrote. One of the most important things they wrote on their note. Huh? Florence has been there. She knows. <laughs> You see, <laughs> you see, <it's laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, I want to laugh, say hallelujah, man. <laughs> you know, in, in God we, we trust. The, the, when they were founding the whole of that Northern America, they decided, hey, guys, we cannot do it without God. And so, you can even see their pictures. You can go to Google and you will see the first parliament kneeling down, praying to Jehovah God. And then, as time was going, remember, it was just a bush. There was nothing there. But as time was going, because they trusted God, cabinet ministers were praying, teachers were praying, everyone was praying, and the nation, because it was fearing God, became a powerful nation. And all of a sudden now, do you hear the many calamities that are happening in America? You know why? Because they are removing God from the equation. Hallelujah. They, are take, they took the Bible out. They took everything out. And you know what? One thing I know about God, God can never be mocked. 
You know, God right now, this is 2017. God brought in a guy most of you did not recommend. But do you know what the guy is doing? He has ordered that the Bible goes back to schools. That amen has marasmus. He has ordered that the Bible goes back. He has ordered that the assembly meetings must have prayer. Because they removed all these things away. And started to accommodate everything. When God was taking the Jews from, from, the, from Egypt going over to, to the promised land. He told them, don't, be careful you guys. Don't mix yourself with foreign traditions. He even told them, guys... For your sake, don't even marry people from other, other cultures because they'll corrupt you. And America became so corrupted. I don't know if you're hearing what I'm saying. And I, I, I don't mean to blow my own pipe, but one of the nations, I think there are about three or four nations in Africa you must watch currently. Because they've brought God completely back into the system. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They brought him back completely. I need to say it. I need to say it. It's not safe for me, but I need to say it. That you see, I grew up in a country where we pushed God out of it. Amen. And all of a sudden, there was no sugar in the shops. I grew up in that era where there was no salt, no soap, no nothing. Nothing was in the country. Have you ever been to a country where you go to shop right and the, sh the shelves are empty? They brought her, and then somebody came up in that nation, 1991, and came up in the nation and said, no, we have done something wrong. We need to bring God back in here. And he himself called the nation and said, come to the stadium, the largest stadium in the land, and let's call God back in the country. Amen. Right now as I speak, they don't know where to put the next call, get the next soap because the shelves are full. Give me a better amen. amen. Because we are talking God here. Amen. You see, that's why the Bible says righteousness exhorts a nation. Amen. 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 Righteousness exhorts a nation. And, 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 and now let me, let me turn my attention back to what I came for here. I want you to know that one of the reasons why we, ha we are having a lot of problems in the church is because we are slowly removing God from church. You know, these instruments have taken over from God. Nothing about God. Just the mention of God without the heart. You know that, that God has been taken out of ushering. Do you know that God has been taken out of the choir? Do you know that God has been taken out of intercession? And then we, we, we want him to, you know, why is it that even after church, you don't feel like you were, you were in church? It's the same as if you were in the tavern. Ladies and gentlemen, I have news for you. We need to bring back God. We need to bring back God. Because material has taken over. You know, there are many people now, they can't go to a church when there is no musical instruments. If the chairs are plastic, they won't go there. If the building is not a beautiful building, they won't go there. Because now God is, is being gauged with what we have. What type of people are in that church? We, there are people who won't go to church if they didn't find any professional people. But I'm looking for those people as humble as they are that will open up their mouths and begin to pray. Perhaps they didn't even have Colgate in the morning because they don't have it. But when they come to church, they open up their mouths and begin to call upon the name of Jehovah God. That's the church that I'm looking for. That's the people that I'm looking for. Those old time people that do not think about what I'm going to wear in order to worship God. Those that will put on anything that they can grab in order to go and serve God. People go to church because of what cars were outside. Say, are these, are these the cars that you have in your church? 
In fact, I went to that church and I only saw uh, three cars. I, 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 I can't go to such a church. You know, materialism has taken over the church. But I want us to know, ladies and gentlemen, if God is booted out of the church, we will pray the way we want. We will sing the way we want. Nothing will happen. At the end of the day, the Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. Hallelujah. Oh, my generation. The generation of Sami Musepa has checked taken God away. But we are looking for that remnant. The people that will come. You know, you know that in our generation, television has taken over. The thing you call DSTV. Yes, it can be right. It can be nice to watch. But you know what? It has taken over the place of God. We thank God for people who thought, let us put this gospel even on DSTV so that we force these people to worship God. We are looking for a remnant. The church is looking for a remnant. A people that will embrace God in everything that we are doing. Ladies and gentlemen, let me come back home. Is God in your house? Because in certain houses, there is more TV than God. There is more pleasure than God. We visit one another's homes just to find out what they have bought. If you are hearing me, say amen. amen. If you are hearing me, say amen. amen. You know, people have reduced God to a Sunday. And as we heard from the people that spoke here, even Sunday is becoming hard for people to worship God. God is quickly and quickly being removed from the equation. Everything else has become so important than the God of Isaac, the God of Jeremiah. He who says, let us make man in our own image and in our likeness. We have quickly booted him out of the church. Even on Sunday, sometimes we are in church, but God is not there. couldn't get sleep last night. I said, God, will you be there? And we start to preach. Will you be in the service? Will you be there to heal your people? Will you be there? Or we are just going to play gimmicks. I need God back in our lives. We need God back in the services. We would rather embrace services where we are just playing and speaking lies to one another. But the Bible still remains. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish. When you hear how many people are struggling and suffering. People that are suffering and struggling. When you hear how many people give me that phone. I show you one message that came to my phone yesterday. Somewhere, somewhere. When you hear how people are struggling. You cannot afford to come and play games in church. Hallelujah. We have booted him out. God gone from the church of Jesus Christ. People are only remembering God on Christmas Day. That's when many people, you know, I was taught the statistics of the United States. The churches are full on Easter and the churches are full on Christmas Day. Is that, is that why God died for us? That we can only think about him once in a while. There are many people who cannot even take Holy Communion. We give you a cup and say Holy Communion. You say, I don't take that. But the Bible says, do this in remembrance of me. Do it as you remember me all the time. Oh, Jehovah God. Jehovah God, help us. Jehovah God help us. Can somebody begin to pray? Call upon your God to help you. 
Call upon God. Begin to open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray, God, help me. Help me in my life. Help me. Let me have you more than I have my car. Let me have you more than I have my mansion. Oh, Jehovah God, there is no one like you. There is no one like you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Sing and pray. Sing and pray. Let's call God in the service. Let's call God in the service. Don't play it first. Leave it first. Keep singing. Keep singing. Mandeke sekete rebo. Help us, Jehovah God. Sing it, Mama. Sing it. Sing it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Yeah. Right. Bela Mandere Bosakata Oh Jehovah God Sing it again Jesu Stand up on your feet and let's talk to this God. Let's invite him in our service this morning. Rikande mose monde monde keba bote reba. Monde bote ba kete reba. Mindo robo seke rebo sende. Go, my Savior, do not pass me. Sing it again, sing it again, sing it again. Savior, Savior, save my Savior. Somebody help me to kneel down before this God. Somebody help me to kneel down before this God. The church has lost its original position. There must be restoration in the church. There must be restoration in the church. My God, my God, my God. Sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it. My God, my God. Rebeke Terebosendi.